What's happening everybody? I'm back with another video on Android 13. I haven't done a video on beta one as you might have seen, but um, now that we have a second beta out, I figured I would have a look at the release notes and I did find some new things. Um, things that you may or may not know about already. I wanna check out two things in this video. One being um, the photo picker that somehow didn't work when I first tried it in the first developer preview. It does work now, I wanna show you how it works. And second of all, the predictive back gesture. Uh, that's gonna be another point of contention for a lot of people. It's not as controversial as the notification permission. However, well, let's see how much work it is to migrate away from on back pressed. Let's get started. Okay, so here we are back in my sample app and um, down here I did have a button set up already for the photo picker. And in my main activity, I am actually connecting the button to a click listener, which will launch my photo pick contract. But um, as I said in the beginning, I couldn't make this work in developer preview one. Uh, now this device is running beta two of Android 13 and this does now work. So I wanna show off how I did it. Basically there is a new intent type and you launch an intent with that action and it will show a photo picker like so. Let me just click this button and you can see this sheet coming up uh, which prompts me to select a photo from either my photo gallery or my albums. There's room for, for a gallery down here, like a grid of images and you click one and it returns to you with the image. Uh, and then when I have selected something or when I close this, um, then the on activity result is called basically, or in this case, my contract finishes. And you can see in the locket, I log out that the, the content URI of the photo that I picked, in this case, it was null because I just um, dismissed the dialogue again. Now let's see how I uh, set that up. So I am using an activity result contract here, um, registering it in the activity. And I called it pick image. It's a custom class that I wrote. It's based on um, some code by Ian Lake, I think it was. Uh, in the contract here, this is the important part. So basically this uh, is a backwards compatible result contract. And if you are running Android T, Android 13, then it uses this intent uh, with the new action media store dot action pick images. This is the one that makes the bottom sheet show up on Android 13 and above. And then um, the else case catches older devices that cannot have this new picker in which case it's just a generic intent um, for getting content this class extends from get content up here and so uh, we basically just confine this get content intent to get images and videos technically you could also remove the video part here because i don't think pick images will actually pick videos that would be a weird name for it if it could pick videos but yeah that's how it works and it's pretty great Okay, so much about the photo picker. I could not let that slide. I had to make a follow-up, uh, just letting you know that it does work now for me. Um, it bothered me a lot that I couldn't get this to work, but now it does work. Let's continue on with the more interesting piece of this video, I feel like. Uh, it is the predictive back navigation. Ever since the beta releases of Android 13, a new feature has crept among the others that we've looked at so far in this little video series, and that is the predictive back gesture. And this this animation here shows you what it looks like. And in fact, that's kind of a lie because it's not actually looking like that right now. However, in the future, it will look like that. Now, what does predictive back gesture mean? Basically, it's a reaction to getting rid of the bottom navigation um, with the three buttons, right? The triangle, the circle, the square, basically the three primary navigation options for Android uh, historically, right? Going back, going home, going uh, to recents. And because we don't have that anymore, I guess Google has kind of identified a problem wherein using gesture navigation it's sometimes not clear where the back gesture would take you. In this animation here we can see what Google's plan for the future is. Basically there's this little shrinking of the Chrome window here. When you go back it's kind of like a preview and you see underneath what's going to show up when you actually commit to the back gesture. This thing alone would be all right. However, as developers, we have to be aware of this. Android 14 next year is going to break our apps if we do certain things. So certain navigation types are being deprecated and next year they are going to stop working. So we have to do something. In particular, if you use on back pressed in your activities or if you override on key down and you check for the back button and you like do some stuff, 
you are in for pickle. You have to change something. Let's take a look at this in action. So I've updated my sample app to include a new button at the bottom here, uh, labeled start back gesture test. And when I click it, it opens uh, this new activity that you see on the left here. Basically, this activity is a generic layout. It doesn't matter what's on the screen. Um, the idea is it mimics um, a screen that you may have written before, where you have like a form with different input fields. But then if you go back, uh, without saving your changes or something, you want to show a dialogue that says, hey, are you sure you want to go back? You're going to lose your changes, something like that. So the way you would traditionally do this uh, in Android is you would override the back button, the hardware back button, and you would maybe intercept it and say, I want to show my dialogue instead. And only if the user confirms on the dialogue, then I'm going to finish and go back. So this is how the legacy implementation could look like. So in here, let me actually zoom in a little bit. And you see, blah, 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 this is not important. Content view, this is the layout that's being set. And then I have an edit text in here, it's this one. And I'm adding a text listener, which basically sets this Boolean flag uh, to true or false, depending on if I enter something. So when there's text in here, uh, this flag text was entered is set to true. Uh, if I delete everything, it's being set to false. And that basically mimics I have unsaved changes, right? And then below here, I have overwritten on back pressed and also on key down. Um, I'm overriding both because I want to show what's going to change with Android 13. Uh, in here, if the back button is detected, we check if there was some text entered. If so, we return true from from on key down, which basically means um, we intercept the back button. We don't want the system to handle it and go back on our behalf. We want to do it ourselves. We show the confirm dialog in this case. And for all other cases, we call to the super method and it handles the keys for us. And then this last method is basically just showing this dialog uh, a yes, no uh, question, basically. If you select yes, the activity will finish. If you select no, then just the dialog will dismiss. I don't have anything entered in my uh, text field. And now if I go back uh, in the lockhead, you can see uh, that we have a call to on key down, key code back was called. And then after that, there was on back pressed called. Let me go back to the screen and I will not enter something and then I want to go back. So I'm clicking in the field, I'm typing in one, two, three, and then I want to go back. Okay, so now you can see that this if case here was caught. So we are showing the confirmed dialog. We did return true, and that makes the system not call through to your on back pressed. This is enough for our use case because we do want to intercept the back button. Only with on key down, you can do something like this. On back pressed is basically just a notification. You can't really intercept it at that point anymore. Now in the future, this stuff will no longer work. With Android 13, you can still get around it. So you can leave your old implementation like this, but the users are not gonna get the cool animations when Android 13 is released. However, with Android 14, this stuff will no longer work. So if you target Android 14 in the future, uh, this will break. You have to change your implementation. And you have to change it to a API called the on back pressed uh, a dispatcher, I think. In fact, there's two different ones. Uh, one from Android X and then one from the platform itself. And I suggest you use the one from Android X just because it will take care of the backwards compatibility stuff. But here you can see it. So there's a back invoked dispatcher. That's the one from the platform. So that only works on Android 13 and up, the one we see now. And then we have the on back press dispatcher. And this is, comes from Android X activity, I think. It comes from one of the Android X libraries. Uh, I'm going to put it up on screen right now. Thank you, me. Actually, before we migrate this to the new recommended way, let me show you how this will break in the future. Uh, you can enable this flag uh, eagerly in the manifest. So if you open your manifest file and you go to the application tag, there's a new one you can add, enable on back invoked callback. So basically this is a Boolean flag uh, that is false by default. So it's turned off for now, but you can turn it on to either test your implementation or when you're convinced that your app is already good, then you can switch it on for real and then uh, you are opted into the predictive back gestures. This is a behavioral change. I'm going to build the app again and we're gonna see that my implementation with the on key down and on back press will no longer work. Keep in mind, uh, we did have the on key down callback in the lockhead here. And we did see our dialogue and everything was dandy. Let's see what happens when I turn this flag to true. 
Okay, so the app has rebuilt. I'm entering one, two, three. Uh, and keep in mind, the only thing that's changed is the flag being set to true. And now I'm going to invoke a back gesture and we see our dialogue. No, we don't see the dialogue. And in fact, the lock cat is empty down here. You see nothing. The on key down is no longer called for us. And in fact, what you need to do is use the new back handling APIs, um, either from the platform or Android X. I would recommend Android X just because it handles the back compatibility stuff too. So if you have an activity, and I believe this goes for fragments and dialogues as well, you have access to a thing called the on back pressed uh, dispatcher. And what you do on that object is to register your, yourself with a callback and you can turn that callback on and off. And um, if it's time for the system to, ha to find somebody to handle the back gesture, if your callback is basically next in line to handle that callback, the system will ask you to do it. You can have an enable callback and you will get the say on what to do with the back action. So what we do is we use the on back press dispatcher and what you add is a callback. So we basically, there's a method here, there's uh, different flavors, but we are gonna use uh, this one here. We are in an activity, so we can pass this. Um, the first argument is a lifecycle owner. So activity is a lifecycle owner. Uh, you can see here, it prompts me to add a extension function variant of this API. And now you can see, okay, uh, this Lambda here is what's gonna be called when the back button happens. So basically in here, you do your back press handling. And what we would need to do is we assume when this is called that the back button is ours to call. So we don't really need to do this conditional that we did before. If text was entered, blah, blah, blah. We don't need to do this. If this Lambda above is called, we know we can handle it. So what we only need to do is paste in the show confirm dialog in here. And uh, now this is active. This is active all the time now. You can see if I go into the API definition, there's another parameter here, uh, this one, enabled. So basically you can control via a Boolean parameter if this callback should be enabled or not. The method add callback actually returns the callback back to you. So we can capture this in a variable. Actually, let me get more space here so we can see the entire line. Basically this returns the callback to you. And now on this callback variable, we can turn this off and on after the fact. Basically, we can do is enabled true, is enabled false. Based on other logic in our activity, we can turn on and off the um, callback. And if it's turned off, then if a system back happens, uh, we are not going to handle it because we turn ourselves off. So basically the system will look in the next place in the stack. So basically if you have different things on top, uh, the first one with enabled callback wins on the stack. Uh, now this could be your fragment intercepting the back button before its activity does or some child fragments, some composables that works too. Um, so basically it's, it's a stack based system and the first one enabled wins. You can maybe already tell where this is going. Um, in our text listener here, basically where we have the text, this line here that sets this Boolean flag is now literally gonna just turn on and off this callback. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna do callback is enabled. Um, it is enabled when the text is not null or empty. So basically we kind of just copy the line below, but uh, we set the callback on and off instead of keeping a Boolean variable. So this can go away, this can also go away. And now this callback will be active for as long as this lifecycle owner lives. It will automatically destroy itself when the lifecycle dies. And we don't need this anymore. And in fact, we don't even need this anymore. And also we don't need this anymore. All of this code can be removed. The only thing we do need is the callback on the back press dispatcher. And I believe that should be all. Let me recompile this and then let's see if this works again. Okay, so my app is built. Uh, in fact, I did have to switch this thing back to false. So we don't want the callback to be enabled until we have typed something, right? So the initial state should be false. Uh, I found that bug after checking it off camera. <laughs> this is disabled by default and only after typing something into our input field, the callback then will be flagged on and off depending on if you have entered something in that field. So let's go and check out the new implementation. I'm on the screen now and I'm going to just go back without entering anything. So the callback is still false, which means that our uh, callback does not get a say. It goes back to the system because there's nothing else to interject. And you can see 
we return to the home screen. Okay, so once again, I'm going to enter one, two, three in this text field. And then with this text being entered in the field, I'm going to invoke a back gesture and here's the dialogue. So this would work uh, exactly the same on an older device. Um, and with our implementation backed by Android X, we have made sure to have the new APIs on the new phones and the older APIs on the older phones. Either way, our back press is um, now hooked in and it still works. In fact, I even prefer this implementation. Like you can see it's less code. I have to wrap my head around this callback being enabled, disabled, who goes on top of whom um, scenario. This is kind of different from the on back press and on key down world. However, I believe that it is more streamlined and there's less confusion, especially if you have a deep nested hierarchy where it's important for some components to take precedence over others, but only in certain situations. So in addition to the notification permission, there is some other news and development for the permissions regarding external storage. So where before we used read external storage, now with Android 13, you have new permissions that you need to ask, depending on what kind of content you want to read from the external storage. So um, this is a basic story of um, backwards compatible permissions. In your manifest, you would specify the old permission just until the max SDK version of Android 12. So Android 12 and below get the old permission and everything else gets the new one. Uh, of course, you have to make sure to also request these permission at runtime. Uh, the system will make sure to like merge them together. So if you need images and video and you request them together, then uh, you will not see two permission prompts, one after the other, but rather you just see one unified one that's taken care of by the system. So yeah, that's gonna change. I didn't wanna show it in a video because honestly, now I have said everything that there is to say about it. And that wraps up the Android 13 beta video. Next up would be platform stability. So I don't intend there to be a, another video like this where I go through new features. So yeah, if there's anything about Android 13 you'd like me to go in more detail about, uh, then please let me know. Uh, in the comments. Otherwise, I guess I'll see you in the next video whenever I decide to make another one. Uh, until then, thanks for watching and take care. Bye-bye.